Alright guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about marginal social benefit with marginal social cost. Alright, so behind me I have two supply and demand models, really basic, exactly what we've done all year long. So at this point we know that the intersection of supply and demand curve, where the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded, that's our point of equilibrium. And so we have our equilibrium quantity and our equilibrium price. And to this point, we've assumed that when the market is in equilibrium, that that is a good thing. That the market is uh, providing something efficiently. So in this case, we'd be making the assumption that this demand curve represents the marginal social benefit. So in other words, uh, well actually, let's define that down here. So I have a little bit of an equation, really simple. Marginal private benefit plus a marginal external benefit is equal to the marginal social benefit. All right, a lot of acronyms, lots of words, it's not a tough concept at all. The marginal private benefit, when we think about private benefit, it's the people who are directly involved in this transaction. All right, so we'll use the word marginal private benefit to uh, represent the people who are buying the good, the ones who are actually involved in the transactions. Same way with cost, we're going to have a marginal private cost, that'll be the people who are actually selling the good. All right, so those will be the word private, so it's the people actually buying and selling, whether it's marginal profit, private uh, benefit or the marginal private cost. Then we have something called external costs and benefits. Now again, from previous videos, you guys have already been introduced to these terms. This is when there is some kind of additional either benefit that accrues to other people as a result of your purchase of that good. So you get a flu shot and then they're less likely to get the flu because you're less likely to get the flu so it's less likely to be spreading around in their area. So there is a benefit to them of you getting a flu shot. That's an external benefit. So when we take the marginal private benefit, that's the benefit you receive for buying that good, plus the marginal external benefit, the benefit other people get for you having bought that good, that will give us something called the marginal social benefit. The idea here is that when this is the case, when the supply curve is representing the marginal social cost, the demand curve is representing the marginal social benefit, our market is not only in equilibrium, but it is also producing the optimal quantity of a good. However, this isn't always the case. Sometimes this demand curve, instead of representing the marginal social cost, it's really only representing, or sorry, I said cost, I just said benefit. Instead of representing the marginal social benefit, it's only representing the marginal private benefit. So that means that there must be some external benefit if marginal private benefit and social benefit aren't the same thing. So what would happen here is we would have a new curve, we had another demand curve, but we're going to represent this as the marginal social benefit. All right. So what this is telling us is that the marginal social benefit is greater than the marginal private benefit. So this must be the case that there is some kind of external benefit that is accruing to other people. So we're going to talk about what can be done to fix this problem in the next video or a future video. But what this is showing us is that, as it turns out, our market equilibrium, where supply equals demand, is not actually the optimal amount of production for this particular good. Because this would be, there is some kind of positive externality in this particular case. Because the marginal social benefit is greater than the private benefit, that must mean that other people are benefiting by your purchase of that good. Therefore, society would ideally want people to purchase more of that good. So actually, the optimal production of this good is going to be at point Q star. And then we would have a price up here as P star. So the optimal outcome for society is different than the equilibrium outcome for society. So in this case, we have a positive externality, so that's what this is going to look like. On this side, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to do a marginal, a higher marginal social cost. So I'm going to draw this up here. We're going to say that our marginal social cost is greater than our marginal private cost. So this would be an example like a firm that is polluting. And so they have some benefit to the pollution because it allows them to, do, uh, to produce their good cheaper. But that pollution is going to instill costs on other people who are not part of this transaction. So in this case, our supply curve right now is only representing the marginal private cost. We'll say that our demand curve is representing the marginal social benefit because good news, we're only going to change one of these at a time. We aren't going to have them both be wrong at the same time. So you can breathe a sigh of relief there. 
But since this is only the marginal private cost and we're saying that there are external costs being um, inflicted on others, we're gonna have where our MSC, our marginal social cost, is greater than our marginal private cost. So in this case, our point of equilibrium is actually means that we are producing too much of a particular good. So we don't want to produce to the point of market equilibrium. The market will produce too much of this good. This is a negative externality because it is imposing additional costs on other people. So we actually need to decrease the quantity that is being produced. So Q star is going to be the optimal quantity. And then we're not really going to worry about price right now. The next video will show how that will work. So I'm not really too concerned with that at this moment. But this will be our optimal amount. And again, the principle comes back to we really only want to produce to the point where the marginal social benefit is equal to the marginal social cost. Because that means we've taken into account all costs and benefits, not just to the people directly involved in the transaction, but society as a whole. So the people who are going to be negatively affected by the pollution or the people who will be positively affected by you getting more education or by you getting a flu shot or whatever the case is. So if we look at point E, what we would notice if we look at the points between point O and point E, between the optimal and the equilibrium, is that all of these points of production, all these marginal social benefits, notice that they are less than the marginal social cost. Marginal social cost is less, so if we, or the marginal social cost is higher, I should say. So if we look here, as we go from Q star to QE, this is the marginal social cost. It's going higher and higher. The marginal social benefits declining. We see that the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal social benefit, which means that we should not be producing and consuming those units. Same principle over here. Um, so when we go from uh, point O back down to point E, it's telling us that these are ones that should be consumed um, because the marginal social benefit up here is greater than the marginal social cost. So again, that principle of marginal analysis will serve us well in this lesson. Till next time, this has been a Lamani production.